Um, so first thing you're gonna have to do is add a tracker node. This is gonna track the footage for us so our spaceship isn't just floating around all janky and ridiculous. Uh, let's just place that somewhere, somewhere that's got nice high contrast and we're going to hit the track forward button and let the computer do its thing. Now that that is done, you have to make sure you go into the operation mode here and there's a drop down menu and you wanna do match move. That's gonna tell the computer that whatever we're putting on top of it is going to match this exact movement of the handheld camera. So let's get our spaceship in here. So we're gonna, uh, well, might as well rename this while we're doing it. So let's call this spaceship. And we'll call it spaceship A. Now we're gonna connect spaceship A to our tracker node and boom, there it is. So if you play it forward, you can see the tracking is working. Um, without that tracker node, it would literally be floating and look absolutely ridiculous. So we don't want that. Um, next, we're going to have to key out that green screen. I don't actually have a real 3D model. This is something that I found online for free that just came pre-installed with a green screen background, which isn't a big deal because we can easily just add a keyer. In this case, it's gonna be a Delta keyer. We'll add that in, grab our little eyedropper here and boom, keys out green perfectly. But as we can see, our ship is looking pretty janky on top of our footage. So next thing we're gonna have to do is add a transform. Transform node in here. And we can position that ship exactly where we want it. Move it down a little bit and slide it over. Somewhere in this neighborhood looks about right. All right, that's not looking so bad. However, we can see it hits our actor's head, so we're gonna have to slide it up and out of the way. Maybe bring it down just a hair. That stays pretty good and out of the way. Otherwise, I'd have to roto around his head and do a big mask, and I don't really feel like dealing with that, to be honest. So, moving on. After the transform, let's go in and try to match this color a little bit. So, oops, don't want to disconnect this guy, put him back. After the Delta keyer, we're going to add a color corrector just to match this color ever so slightly. You can see the wheel, what's going to happen here affecting only the ship that has been left over after the key. And I think somewhere in this reddish brownish tint to it, that looks pretty good. Maybe even bring its saturation down just a bit somewhere in that neighborhood. Looks pretty good. And nice, not so bad. So what I'm noticing is the ship is a little bit, let's see what we're looking at here on number two. And we're gonna zoom in a tad. So the ship is looking a little crispy in comparison to our original footage, which we could easily just do a uh, denoise on the original footage and clean it up, but I actually kind of like the grittiness of it. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of film grain on top of the ship. So let's go ahead and do film. Let's add in some green. We'll zoom in a little bit more so we can see exactly how we're looking. That's not too bad, but I actually want to match it to the grain size of this footage below it. So we can bring down the size a little bit here. Somewhere in this neighborhood, not too bad. I think it may be 
Looks about good to me. Uh, maybe a little bit less. Somewhere in that neighborhood. Not too bad. All right, so let's back this back out so we can see what we're doing. So we've got our ship, we've got the green screen keyed out, we've got a little bit of a color correction on top of that, we've got our film grain in it and our transform to put it into place. The next thing we're gonna need to do is add a little bit of atmosphere. It kinda looks like it's just sitting right on top of our footage. So I'm gonna copy my media in and paste that in. Let's move this merge node and our media to the right of our other ship. Oh, uh oh, it disappeared. That is because we're gonna have to add um, a mask to it so that we can just kind of tuck it into the clouds a little bit. You'll see what I mean in a minute. So now that we've added this polygon mask, we're gonna be able to draw around this ship and hide everything. Um, that we kind of don't want to see. I'm not really a fan of this thing sticking off the back of it, and this looks a little bit too clean and crispy. So I'm gonna tuck that up into the clouds a little bit. And I've noticed that my keyframe here, I'm actually not on the beginning frame. So I want to deselect this keyframe Otherwise, it's going to try to animate. So I'm going to deselect that and go ahead and go back to the first frame. Now, you can see what the, the mask is doing is kind of cutting out the duplicated background and sort of tucking it behind this version of a cloud that I've sketched out. But if we soften the edge just a little bit, you'll see the ship start to kind of reveal itself back through. It gives the illusion that it's tucked up into these clouds. And let's see how that goes. Not too bad. Gives it a little bit of atmosphere and kind of gives the illusion that it is resting inside that fog and the clouds and it helps color blend some of the ship a little bit as well. So I'm happy with how that looks. The next thing that I would do for this shot is uh, try to tie it together with a little bit of a lens element, kind of give something between you and the subject that is obviously CGI and kind of fake. So what I like to do is add a little bit of some sort of an element. In this case, it would be dirt on the lens. So I'm gonna grab a merge node, tie that in by holding shift and it'll just drop right in and plug that into the merge. As we can see, it is way too big. <laughs> so we're gonna have to drop that down in size uh, somewhere in this neighborhood. Let's get this back to fitted so we can see what we're working with here. Uh, somewhere in that neighborhood looks about right. And we got to add this apply to uh, the apply mode from normal to screen so we can see through it. And if you look at it, it is a little bit over the top and by a little bit, I mean a lot. So we have to either bring the gain down. That's one way to do it. Or we could do it with this blend mode. I like to do it with the blend mode. Somewhere in that neighborhood there. Let's take a look at that. It's still a little bit much. Subtlety goes pretty far in this case. I'm thinking around there. It just gives a little something between you and the effect. Um, help sell the illusion that there is something physically in the shot. Uh, I think that looks pretty good. I'm actually gonna bring it back up just a tad. Something in that neighborhood. So in our case, we actually decided to go in the film our character runs up and we get this big reveal of the spaceship, where in our case, we actually had two ships. So this is actually pretty easy to do. We just have to move over our droplets, make room. We can actually just take our original ship and the entire node tree, 
that it has, including the tracking information. We can just copy and paste it. Let's bring this up here. And we just have to add this right in between. Now, that all that did was duplicate that exact same ship. So what we're gonna have to do is take this transform node and slide it down and into position that we want it to be. We're gonna shrink it down a little bit. This guy's gonna be a little bit further off in the distance and tucked in right about there. Now, that does not look great because this ship in uh, reality would be sitting way off in the distance, uh, a lot further back than this one. So considering its distance, I'm just gonna take its tracker node, which is kind of acting as a merge node, which uh, you can do little minor adjustments with. If you go to the last page here, the settings, one of the top options here is just the blend mode. I'm just gonna bring this down, bring it down, bring it down, bring it down. Somewhere in this neighborhood, that's just gonna tuck it into the clouds a little bit and into the background. I'm actually gonna push it back a little bit with size too. It's a little too close. So something like that, looking pretty good. What I'm noticing is when we do the playback, and your eye's gonna pick this up really quickly, is that these things are in exact sync. Their animation is 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 moving exactly the same time. So it looks a little fake. Your, your brain will detect that right away. So what I would suggest doing here is add a, uh, let's just see what we got for timing. Time speed. Let's see what we can do with this time speed. We do this one and let's just set a little bit of a delay. Not much, just a hair. Minus five, let's see what happens. Perfect. That's got them moving just ever so slightly out of sync and helps sell the illusion that they're not just a copied and pasted element, which is exactly what they are. So let's go back to our edit page and check out what we've got. Not too bad. And that's exactly how we did this shot from the short film. So this is our node tree. Uh, it's not too bad. We've got our ship, our main ship, and our tracking information there. We've got the atmosphere that we drew by duplicating our background footage to help hide this in the clouds. We've got our second ship that we just copied and pasted and retimed to uh, not match this one exactly. And finally, we have our overlay of our little water droplets on the screen to help tie the whole thing together. That's it. And if you dig the video, please consider liking and subscribing.